of the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Board. So we'll start this meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is just if there was any, we always open up for public comment uh, at the beginning of the agenda. If you have an item that you're going to be at, that you want to have public comment on that's on the agenda, if you'll wait until that agenda item is called, you'll have an opportunity to speak there. This is for anyone who has an issue they wanted to bring before the board that is not on today's agenda. So uh, if there is anyone that wants to speak to the board on an issue not on today's agenda, uh, this is your opportunity. So please step forward. Okay. Check one, two. Go ahead, Jason. Okay. So um, first off, glad to see everybody. We have a lot of people in the audience today. Hope everybody had a good holiday. Um, my issue, well, it's not really an issue. It's just maybe a observation. Um, last month's sitting council meeting, uh, it kind of triggered me. They brought up a proposal that us as a tiers board shot down, and that really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, first off, I want to say, you know, you know, the city government does a great job. I understand they have guidelines to follow, you know, to keep San Angelo safe and look out for her best interests. But uh, sometimes I feel city government tends to just be one-sided and not really look at the other guys. Like uh, these uh, business guys, you know, they're coming at, to us with their dreams. And, you know, if there's an opportunity for us to help, I, I want to help these guys out. That's what that money and the South Tiers is for, and the North Tiers is for. It's there to be spent. It's not there for city government to sit on. So uh, we shot down a proposal, and they still brought it to light. Now, I wouldn't, I'm all for playing ball with the city. You know, I want the beautification of San Angelo. I want lights fixed. I want sidewalks fixed, streetscaping, hiring people, etc. You know, but when they're not trying to, at least try to play ball with the other guys, it's very hard for me to go along with it. And I think that's why our ex-chair stepped down. And uh, so in saying, I think us uh, sitting on the board, I mean, majority of us are business guys. So I think we show a little bit more empathy for these guys coming up here. So, I mean, I vote yes majority of the time. So in saying that, I think if the city to do a better job showing empathy like us. I mean, I know we can't help everybody, but if there's an opportunity for us to help them, I think we need to do it. And if that means if we can, like, I hate to bring this up, but it just doesn't sit well with me. Earlier last year, we had a chance to help out six businesses in the South. And we we're gonna move a little bit of money to help them get going. And you know the South needs the money, tax revenue, City Council shot that down, and I did not like that. And uh, now they're ready, you know, they want these uh, proposals from us that are going to move hundreds of thousand dollars for the X amount of years for streetscaping, landscaping, which I'm for, but, you know, I think we need to help the businesses first. So that's what I wanted to, that was my issue with what Tears is about right now. And I, I know South didn't have money but we need to work on helping businesses that are gonna generate revenue for the South, as well as the North. And for the North applicants, y'all need to spend that money because if you don't spend it, someone else is gonna spend it. And they're gonna spend it on stuff that y'all might not like. So y'all need to get out there and y'all need to get those applications and y'all need to start fixing y'all side. So that's my comment. All right, thank you. Well, Hold on, hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. And I just want to get some clar clarification. I know one of the issues um, that was discussed at that city council meeting is on the agenda for our discussion later. And I just want to make sure we don't get outside of what's on the what's posted for the agenda as far as discussion goes. Yes, and this item is for public comment, so it's not uh, intended for discussion. 
um, the the issue that Jason brought up, I will be discussing in the financial report. So you'll okay. have an opportunity to ask some of those questions at that point uh, as well. But yeah, this is not intended to be a back and forth either among the board yeah, or with citizens. It's purely for the citizens to comment with no response. If we wanted to have an agenda item on it to fully vet it and discuss it amongst ourselves, we would have to post that for the next meeting. But we That's can correct. talk about it when you give us the financial report and report on what the city council's action was and how it affects us That's financially. Correct. I don't. I don't mean to cut you off, uh, Tom, or anything. So, but uh, are there any other public comments? Well, All right. well said. Yep. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, and I'm, again, this is just the law restricts us as to far how far we can take a discussion on something that's not on the agenda. So we just want to be careful and make sure we're complying with the rules. All right, uh, next item on the agenda number three is consideration of approving the minutes from the October 25, 2022 Tears Board meeting. Those minutes were emailed around uh, to the board members a week or so ago. Has everyone had an opportunity to look over those? The one thing I would want to, to um, Mention on the next item on our agenda, it also says election of vice chair, but the, we actually did that at the last meeting. That's reflected in these minutes, so I assume that's just an error. It, well, it's not. Okay. Um, the well, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and review the minutes. Okay. Approve sure. the minutes, yeah. then, we, then you can tell us what we need sure. to do with that. Uh, does anyone have any other additions or changes to the correction or corrections to the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Motion has been made. By Tom and seconded by Jason. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. The minutes have been approved. Um, all right. Next item on the agenda is election of vice chair. And I can give you a little bit of background. Just why, number one, why we're electing a vice chair and not a chair. Um, uh, under the state law that establishes tiers, um, uh, elected officers have to be elected at the first meeting of every year. And so what we did in October was elect basically to serve the end of a term okay. uh, for last year. Okay. So we do have to, every January or whenever the first meeting of the year is, we have to have a new Mr. election of officers. Mr. Now Chairman, that, since Gaeta did such a great job in the last three months, I'm, <laughs> I move we... Elect him by acclamation as vice chair for the next 11 months. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Brown, seconded by Mr. Villarreal. Are there any other nominations? All right. There being no other nominations, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm sorry, nobody opposed your election, Greg. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, thank you for that clarification, John. Uh, all right, so it's time for the financial report. Give that to us, Mr. James. Yes, thank you. John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. And before I jump into the financial report, I'll mention about the chair. Uh, by that same state law, the chair has to be appointed by the city council. Uh, and at their last meeting, the chair, uh, or I'm sorry, the, this council reappointed uh, Mr. Hogue as chair for another year. Um, and so. You didn't tell me I had an out. <laughs> but, okay. Well, All right. You need to let a council member know before January next year. <laughs> All right. Okay. Otherwise, you might be stuck again. We'll continue. So um, these are the reports that you received. This is the South report. And remember, these numbers uh, we get from our finance department, and they're as of the the end of the month, the previous month. So these numbers are all as of December 31st. I will have a slide that updates these slightly uh, in just a moment. Um, but this shows that the um, as of December 31st, the available funds was 286,000 in the south zone. And you can see there all of the committed funds that are have already been committed to other projects and just not spent. So the the bank balance, if you will, is actually higher than the 286, uh, but much of that, the 846, uh, 846,000, is already committed to other uh, expenses. 
Uh, and similarly in the north, uh, we have expenditures outstanding uh, that are already committed, a little over $1.1 million, uh, but the available for assignment is about $2.4 million. Uh, but again, I'll adjust that here on the next slide. Um, so the available tiers funds as of December 31st was 286,000, uh, but the city council, as we discussed earlier, did approve those maintenance funds. Uh, you may recall at your last meeting in October, uh, you all voted to deny uh, funding for those uh, maintenance funds uh, for things like tree trimming and landscape uh, maintenance, uh, trash pickup, those kinds of things. Um, the council did take that up at a subsequent meeting uh, and ultimately approved it. Uh, and so uh, you'll see those numbers uh, subtracted out here. Uh, they voted to take 20% from the south and then 80% of that total from the north. And that total was, as you can see, a little over $105,000. Um, and so uh, on this slide, I'm showing th that additional commitment of funds um, that will result in an actual available amount of 265 in the north, I'm in the south, uh, and a 2.3 million in the north. And those numbers will show you again later, but that, that's basically how much funding you have available uh, to authorize for the incentive projects that uh, will come before you. I'll just note now as kind of a preview, uh, oftentimes we have more requests for funding than we have funding available. That's not the case this time. Um, there those amounts total less than what we have available. So no, even if you approve all the projects at their maximum amounts, uh, there will still be some funding left available. Okay. Although in the South, that won't be a huge amount. And just to clarify on the, the maintenance funds, that was the proposal that the board rejected at its October meeting or recommended to deny it. That's correct. Now at the time, staff had recommended a 50-50 split from the North and the South. Um, City Council adjusted that, uh, partly because the North has more money, but the justification was that uh, more of that will end up being on the North side um, with the things like trash pickup and maintenance landscaping. There's uh, there, landscaping maintenance. There's, uh, you know, a longer distance of the Chadburn Street is in the North versus the South. And so okay. that so was the... took that request to City Council? Uh, it was a request by city council to take up the item uh, that you all had denied. Can um, you tell us who the city council member was that made that request? I actually don't know. Um, I was contacted by the city manager about it, asking would, to have that item put on the agenda. Would you find out for us? And let us well, uh, I can ask. I could I ask? That. Could I ask a question for, for clarification on that? I know that. Our usual, the usual process is if, if an, a project comes before the board and the board approves the project with spending, that recommendation obviously goes to the city council because the city council ultimately has to approve that before the funds can be spent, correct? That's correct. It's, what is the process, what is the typical process when we deny a recommendation? Does it still go before the board to be considered? It, it I mean, really depends if... Um, uh, a, a city council member can ask for that item to be placed okay. on there. Uh, staff can recommend that that item go on a city council agenda as well. Okay. Um, typically, if, if staff were to recommend against something and you vote against it, it doesn't move forward. Um, in this case, staff had recommended in favor, uh, but you all were pretty adamant in your denial, so we did not intend to, to take it on to city council absent a request from a council member, which which in this case we, okay. we did get. Is that a matter of policy that is written in the bylaws? No. It's not? No. Is it, is it possible to amend our bylaws when something is denied here that it cannot go forward? I couldn't be done in the bylaws. That would have to be done in the ordinance establishing the tiers board. City council would have the ultimate say in the ordinance, obviously. Uh, yes, they would. I mean, of course, even if you change your bylaws, they ultimately have approval authority for your bylaws as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Was it brought board. up in the meeting that we denied it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they were clearly aware that this board recommendation was denial. John, we made sure know, of that. When did you know that? they were going to bring it before the council. Was that before the last plan meeting or was it after? I don't know the date. Um, I will say that we did send out a notice to all of you on the board letting you know that that item was coming up on the council meeting. 
uh, in case um, anyone wanted to speak uh, yeah. uh, about your rationale for denial. What, what was that in the email that was sent out? Yeah, well, yeah, there was an email that was sent out. Mm -hmm. I was out yeah. of town. I saw it, and I was in San Antonio, and I couldn't yeah. get here. Couldn't attend. So, so, out of courtesy, there the council doesn't see fit that since we had turned it down, at least having someone from the board be present, regardless of if it's not the chair, someone from the board, out of courtesy, you know, uh, I hate to be a rubber stamp board. If that's what sure. they're expecting, just whenever we approve what they like, they'll accept it. When mm -hmm. we don't approve something they like, they don't accept it, and, and they move forward with it. Uh, yeah, if they're looking for a rubber stamp board, uh, I'm not their guy here. So Yeah, this is twice within yeah. I don't know how long, yeah. and that's so. not, I mean, what's our purpose? I will say that in, in the past uh, seven or eight years that I've been involved with the board, that's, that's a pretty rare event. Uh, well, I know I, it's happened I twice we, recently, but we have to be careful of going too far afield on the discussion um, as far as the finance report goes. What I, if the board is interested, what we could do is we could put it on as ask that this be added to the agenda item for our next meeting and have a more detailed discussion about it and get some more information about how that occurred. If That'd be great. That's, Let's that's do that. Like yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I request like that be in there. I would like to know All right. the council member that put it on the agenda. And it got approved so quickly. Yeah. Those people that applied for the grant last year, they, they had to wait four months to get an answer. Yeah, yeah so I think well, we'd probably just need to have a general item to talk about what the process yeah, and procedure is. Discussion. I'd like to know what's different from us. I know one of the other boards, the city council tried to do this. Uh, that they overrode the board's decision, and that board had the right to go back and get their funds back. The city council couldn't override their decision and take their money. I know that happened because I, I I'm discussed not that. that. I, I, but I had somebody else I discussed this with, and they said that one of the other boards that happened to them, and they were able to get their money back. The city council couldn't override their decision on there and so this really disturbs me that we vote not to take this money out for maintenance because that's a city budget item that's not a tears item that's right and so yeah. this should not be coming out of tears money and taking tears money is to invest in these people that are sitting out there in the audience want to invest in their business and improve their business and raise our tax base so that we have more money to help other people maintenance is not part of that that's a city sure. budget item. And, that's and, why we voted and I will down, say again, so. we, we, in the presentation to the city council, staff made that clear that that was the feeling of the board. So I, 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 I'm I, sure, I would I'm say sure they, they made their decision knowing what this board's <laughs> opinion was. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure staff did let the council know. I just think we want to have a broader discussion sure. than what we're allowed to do under our agenda items today. Sure. Um, and I think, I, think, I think everyone on the board pretty much has that. Yeah, and same assessment. That connection to, to be sure that we can take action if we decide to do something. Okay. Okay. Council meeting was that? It was the December, December meeting. It was last month. Yes. Last month. Yeah. Okay. They only had one meeting because of Christmas, but I forget yeah. the date. Second week. Of right. I would. I want to ask the board's permission to go out of order on our agenda just because we do have some peop public citizens here that are interested in specific awards okay. applications and I, I was just going to get everyone's preference. I was thinking it would be best to allow the public to be here, go ahead and address their applications and we can deal with that and then if they can want to leave, they can or if they want to stay and listen to the other discussions still okay. on the agenda, if that's all right. That's sure. Fine. Yeah. That was fine. That. That's, that's fine. fine. All right. Then we're going to move uh, to, I believe it's item nine, discuss an impossible action regarding the first incentive award cycle of fiscal year 2023. Good afternoon. Brian Fox, Planning and Development. I get the pleasure of going over some great projects that we received. We'll be starting from the north. And as you can see, we got quite a bit. Um, we got a couple special projects that we'll, we'll take a little bit more time to discuss, but we'll keep this going. Um, we have 2626 North Chadburn. Funding request is 75,000. Uh, recommended is 65, $413. They'll be working to improve the fa facade, paving, fire system, 
um, second egress, um, free reductions. And as you can see, before it was- Brian, a I'm sorry, can you go back to that slide? I just okay. wanted to make one comment that's gonna apply to a number of projects. Uh, you'll see that they, oh, back to that other one, yeah. Um, they requested 75,000, but as we went through the line items, only 72,000 of that was uh, eligible expenses. So we had to subtract out those ineligible. And then with the 10% match that they have to put up as part of that, that results in the recommendation of 65, which is basically the maximum allowable. So okay. on many of these projects where you see we're recommending less than what they asked for, uh, it is the maximum allowable. We have not recommended cutting anything except for those ineligible expenses. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. Um, so 26, 26 North Chadburn, um, before we have a building that used to be a laundromat, as you can see on the sides in the front, um, wear and tear, moving forward to their vision of a nice donutopia with an improved <laughs> drive-in, drive-through on the side. Um, so you can see where that money will kind of be spent to be putting that in on the that side. Next, we have a thousand North Chadburn. This is going to be a tire and fleet services. Once again, funding requested fifty nine thousand three hundred sixty three. Um, recommended amount fifty eight thousand seven hundred fifty three with paving, facade, landscaping, and screening and storage. Um, as you can see, uh, the fence fence line. Um, kind of inside where they would be selling the tires. Uh, and their vision, as you can see, it vastly improves the situation, the storage, the fence line. Um, looks like a place that we'd all want to go. Um, 901 North Chadburn. Um, commercial building. Now, this one has four buildings kind of back to back, so you will be seeing the pictures, but this is a one commercial building. You see this often. Four businesses, one building. So we got 901 North Chadburn requesting funds at 75,000, recommended 75,000. We have 903 um, requesting 75. Um, incentive base is 68,840. Um, 907, once again, 75, recommended 68,840. 909, 75, recommending 75. And here is a commercial building, as you can see. Um, signs, um, the side of the building to which some of the projects, the two end projects that were actually for the 75, the two inners were the smaller amounts. Uh, the two sides, of course, have more to improve on. Their vision. Um, I have a question. Does, does the applicant have proposed tenants lined up for that building? Glad you asked. We actually have all of those people here to speak about their project from the building. And I told them uh, I, once we get through this to come up here and if it, to answer any of your guys' questions. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Then we have 2600 Martin Luther King. Uh, this is an instrument and electric shop. Um, recommended, or I'm sorry, requested 66,000. Recommended 66,000. Outside storage, paving, facade. As you can see, um, fence line. Uh, the location, uh, the storage looks pretty worn down. The vision, now on the left, you got the what the actual will look like with the brick windows. And on the right is actually the repaired fence. So that is what would be encasing the whole unit. This one is for special consideration and has a little bit more to it. This one is, if it requires, it's a nonprofit, so it requires your guys' decision and a three-fourths of the members have to agree upon this to approve it. Also has to have, to be proved to a significant impact that you guys approve as well. This one is requesting $71,845. Um, recommended is $71,845. This is a church. As you can see, it's been worn down, uh, parking lot, grass, the side of the building, the location. Uh, we do have members up here to speak about it. Uh, that being said, their vision and is what they will tell you what they hope to accomplish with your help. Okay. Um, that being said, that are the North projects. I will let you guys decide if you'd like to hear from the members or absolutely. The type of improvements that are planned for 1720 Martin Luther King. I'm sorry, which one, sir? 
1720. For the non oh, okay. what type of improvements are they asking for? Uh, paving, facade improvements, lighting. Uh, okay. Okay. And um, just to clarify on this one, there is an item on the agenda to discuss the nonprofit issue going forward. So we will be talking about that in a minute. The 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 rules as far as they're in place now, that's, that would be grandfathered in because a nonprofit is allowed to apply for funds uh, under our current rules of, of, for, for projects. So that'll be a separate discussion about the whole issue about whether you want to continue to do that going forward uh, after this item. So um, that's Mr. Said, Sherman, there's I'll just also open, I'll open more, the floor for, I'm there's sorry. There's four more applications that didn't get submitted for this go around, so there's for non nonprofits? North side. No, no. This, oh, no, okay. Just north business north applications. Are north you right. ready for yeah, ready? I'm ready. I was just, well, let's open it up for discussion on the, the projects. Chairman, I, I don't have a problem. Mr. Brown, could you with, speak a little more in the mic so we can pick yeah. it up on the. I don't have a problem with any of the, pro of the projects except I would like to us to consider everything right now except the 1720 Martin Luther King and talk about that separately as an issue okay and I my per, my recommendation is is that we approve everything at this point and the motion is except 1720 Martin Luther King and reserve that for a, a separate discussion by this board all right there's a motion to approve all of the projects uh, submitted uh, and presented this this afternoon uh, except for the 1720 MLK project which will be part of a separate discussion is there a second to that motion? Uh, yeah, before, we, before we vote, I'm going to remove myself from voting on this. There's a project here that I am doing the work on, so I'm going to remove myself since we have more in a quorum from voting on this. Which project is that? Uh, 2626 North Chadburn. Okay. All right. But we're going to allow the 1720 to speak. Is that correct? Yes. Sure. Yes. sure. Absolutely. He's just saying approve everything else except 1720 and then have a separate discussion about 1720. Okay. Why, why would we want to separate them? I mean, all the projects have merit. The, uh, the bylaws allows nonprofits to participate in this project. Uh, I would make, you know, well, again, there's a motion, but can't we just approve them all and or have every project speak to their merits? Or what's the difference? Well, I'm, I haven't made a decision yet, but I may or may not vote for the, uh, the Martin Luther King uh, nonprofit. And I, I want to hear first what they have to say. And because, number one, it does not create one dime of tax incentive or a tax enhancement to this city. Number two, it sets a very significant precedent that we need to talk about. If we prove one church, what other churches are coming? What next? Where, where does it stop? So I just think that need, this board needs to talk about it among themselves and decide what what are the merits of this particular case. Well, can, can we take on the, that project first before we vote on, on any of the projects? You know, I, I think I you're pardon. singling them out. Uh, can we just listen to their proposal before we make any motions on any of the projects. Well, I've got a motion on the floor that it can fail. Yeah, but yeah a there's a motion to approve all the projects with, uh, with the exception of 1720 and then to have a separate discussion on 1720. Is there a second to Mr. Brown's motion? Was it seconded? It hasn't been seconded. There a second? I'll second. Okay. Second by Ryan Newland. Is there any discussion on the motion? Per, and I'll, I'll, I'll just speak to as a procedural matter, Tony. I think it's the way I would look at it is it's something that's done quite often in public meetings if there are items on the agenda that do not create any questions or controversy. Uh, that we usually do those, and a lot of times city council will do those on a consent agenda, and you're probably familiar with that yes. from, mm -hmm. your, from your meetings. And so procedurally, I think it's acceptable to do it that way if there are questions that need to be addressed as opposed to having to go through each of them one, one at a time. 
and vote yeah. on them, each of them separately. But we can do that if that's y'all's preference. No, so we're going to give them a chance to talk, and we're all going to vote whether yes. yes or no at the end of that. Okay, I, I'll... And okay, just, you and, seconded, and, right? and 1720 yeah. needs a different amount of voters, you know, to yeah. participate at the same time. It has, yeah. to, it has to have a supermajority uh, to be approved as well, so. Yeah, so I'm for Mr. Brown's thing. Is there any other discussion on the motion? All right, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the, of the motion of approving all projects except for 1720 Martin Luther King and having a separate discussion on that particular item, say yes. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. I'm abstaining as well. You're abstaining? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is anyone else abstaining? Just so we can get, make the record clear. Brian? Yeah, I, I mean, I, like I said, I, I will okay. sustain. Okay. Just for the oh, record, right, we'll, we'll note Mr. Benson's abstention on the one, but then a vote of, of yes, okay, I yeah, assume. Yeah, yeah, I'll vote for everything, but okay. I just want to say for the 26 26. Don't okay. Sorry. And you're just abstaining from the whole vote. Okay, all right. The motion carries. So those of you that are here for the projects 2626 North Chadburn, 1000 North Chadburn, 901, 903, 907, 909 North Chadburn, and 2600 Martin Luther King, uh, those have approved. Um, and well, actually, what we have to go back, I guess, is we just approved that motion. We haven't approved those. so. Now the issue is to entertain a motion to approve 2626 North Chadburn, 1000 North Chadburn, 901, 903, 907, 909 North Chadburn, and 2600 Martin Luther King. So moved. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. Is there any discussion on any of those particular items that, or any questions anyone has before we vote on those items? Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to those items, one of those projects. All right. If there's no further discussion, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor of approving those projects, say yes. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. When will they go to the council, John? Uh, <coughs> most likely the second meeting in February. If we can, so that for you people that just have been approved, it'll go to the city council on the second week in February. All right. Now we'll proceed to discuss uh, 1720 Martin Luther King, uh, and the floor is open for any questions. Well, let me just ask first um, if the proponents for 1720 Martin Luther King project are present. If if there are anyone that would like to come forward and speak at this time, that might help. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Reverend W.J. McClendon, Jr., pastor of Yosemite Missionary Baptist Church. Um, we need a little help, if you will. Now, that parking lot that he just showed, that used to be a gas station, which uh, we purchased in the early 90s. I was overseas uh, stationed in England and Germany at the time. My father was the pastor. And so he purchased that to add on to the church where, to where we would have parking. And in between 94 and maybe 95, 96, that building was, was, torn, was torn down and the uh, tanks were removed from the ground. So now we have uh, pipes and stuff that's been beaten down, but that's kind of sticking up in the parking lot. You have a curb and everything and it's messing up tires. Uh, also, with the, um, with the facade of the building, it, it is uh, stucco. That was done in maybe around 84, 85. That new part of the building was added on May of 1980. So that's cracking and everything. Our front door has been destroyed, if you will. Someone back in October tried to bust through the glass. So right now we have wood. I had, me and my son had to put wood up to take care of that. On the north side of the building, on the older part of the building, which is on 18th Street, we have two big windows that's maybe 20 by five feet window pane. 
And but it's covered up because we covered it up back in back in the eighties to keep the sun out. But if the people that broke the front door ever found out that that was glass, they're in the church. That's part of the renovations for the church as well, where we're going to have that filled in with cedar block because that's what the building type is, with, with smaller windows. Um, we need lighting on the corner. There's a sign there. And uh, so basically, bottom line is we would like the church to look more like a church, more, more uh, uh, to invite more people in. As far as money being spent back into the community, the people that come to the church, the people in the community after services, they frequent Franco's and the other restaurants around there. They also go to the uh, uh, theater there. So the money is being put back into the community with the people that's going to the church there. My name is Evelyn Smith. I am one of the ministers at I guess Enemy Missionary Baptist Church. And I just want to tell you my involvement, how I got started and know about the Tears program. I went to the city council meeting back in June, July, and um, I, I heard them talk about the Tears program. And, and so I went up to the front and I asked the city council and I said, is there any funds in that for a nonprofit organization? And the mayor politely told me, no, it was in regards to businesses. That's where the funds came from, from, from businesses. And I said, okay. So then I sat down. The next city council meeting, the next month, I went to, and I wanted to ask the city council again, well, okay, if TEARS funds are not for nonprofit organizations, is there anything that would be there to help nonprofit organizations? Because... You can, you can make a business look good, but if the area doesn't look good, it doesn't make the business prosper. But before I could get up and ask that question, nonprofit organization was back on for consideration for, non, for a nonprofit organization. They had put it back on there. It got approved somewhere uh, in, uh, in August that nonprofit organization may be eligible if they... Um, if they uh, meet these criteria and incentives, okay? Then in December, and so at that time, I got with my pastor and we started talking about it. We told a couple other churches, and uh, we have one representative here too today, uh, told other churches. We talked to several different businesses, and I got two letters that we actually submitted with our application that these businesses agree that if the nonprofit organization and most of those which are churches, if they improve their area, would increase their business. Because we got a lot of traffic coming up and down Martin Luther King Boulevard. But the thing is, they go through Martin Luther King Boulevard. They will not stop to some of those places because the whole area looks dilapidated. And like our church, it just looks like nobody lives there, you know. So we want to improve our church area to help the businesses improve. And as, as in my pastor said, when people leave the church, they want to go to these different things that's in the area. But if the business, the business facade may look real nice, but if you got a church, and we have several churches on the corner there where we are, that, that looks dilapidated and down and out, Nine times out of ten, a lot of those people are not going not gonna to stop. The businesses could do a lot well better. They do have people coming there now, uh, but if, if the area looked better, people would not just try to drive through and get out. You know, you've got the chicken farm uh, down the street. You've got Franco's. They, they bring in a lot of people. But once they leave there, they're like, oh, zoom, we're out of that area because the area does not look... Um, does not look appealing to the people who come over in that area. So I have talked to a couple of different businesses there, and, uh, and, and I have the letters here, which I told you it was submitted with our application, that they do agree that Wendell Depot was one of them and Western Skies was the other one, that if, you, if we improved our area and our church, it would draw more people in, not only into our church to increase us, but to increase the, the look of the community. 
and to help the businesses also. So we're not just really trying to improve our church. We're trying to do something for the whole, for the whole community. And I talked to this one business uh, person who said that, um, well, let me get to this other part. When I talked to these businesses, and somebody had asked, well, how, why aren't these businesses in the north side, why are they not using application? Why are they not putting in applications and so forth? Well, one of the things was because of the 10% matching that you have to do. Because I talked to this one business person, he said, I got two businesses. I paid $3,000 in property tax on one, $8,000 on the other. I got my home property taxes. I can't really afford the 10% to come up to put in the application. So with that in mind, I'm also asking you uh, in consideration and all this on a on a case by case basis, which you uh, review just waiving those fees for some for some people in some cases just to get this uh, just to get it started. And I want to mention Apostle Boone here. Our church is collaborating with him so we can get this information out to people out to business, not just nonprofit organization, but all the businesses there now. We're going to have a meeting. He's got some applications already, and I've got some applications already from talking to businesses because some didn't even know about it. So we want to get together and get the word out in the community that this is available for them, help improve the area, not only for the business, but for, but for the nonprofit organization, and we want to be like a, a hub for the community. And so at that, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to okay. um, Apostle here. He can say something else. Uh, hello. Okay. My name is Tracy McClendon. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't understand. You approved for nonprofits to receive money. So I really don't see the problem. The people who attend the church pay taxes. Some of them have businesses. A lot of us don't. But we frequent the businesses in that community. We don't even live where our church is located. And we do a lot of business in that area. So excuse me for getting upset. I just I don't understand what the big deal is when you have money to give people and then you don't want to do it. It's if you allow the church to look beautiful. We're a very small church. We don't have the money like all these other large churches. And we need help. And this would be a major step in our church growing. If we help grow the community, we help grow other businesses in that community. People are up and down Martin Luther King Jr. Drive all the time because of the Chicken Art Farm. St. Joseph's Catholic Church is a very large church. There's a lot of people going there. We have the business. We go out to eat after church. We frequent it. Franco's a lot. Western Skies. The, and I just noticed that, that his name changed. Mendez used to be way down. Um, Griller Burger, like there's a lot of businesses, so you can't say we're not giving back to the community because we are. And I'm sorry if we're nonprofit, but we do pay taxes. I just I don't understand why you would approve for people to do something and then take it away from them. To, to piggyback on that, she did bring back to my my memory, um, after, they after they approved this and we started telling everybody and everything, um, then I did, I did see um, the city council December 13th where the city council was asking the tiers board to reconsider nonprofit organization. They want to move the borderline so that it would include Shannon and then that reason to turn down nonprofit organization. And like her, I, I don't understand why they would want to do that. So if they move the borderline, includes Shannon in it, of course you know how big Shannon is, and I can, I can understand why they wouldn't want the money to be eaten up 
by Shannon because <laughs> they're, they're now a nonprofit organization. So I'd like for you guys to consider if uh, I'm not sure if the borderline has not been voted on to move yet, not to move that borderline so that, um, um, you know, I don't know if you, how you want to do that, uh, but that's a good reason for the city council not wanting to have nonprofits in the, in the situation. And I think that ought to be determined by case by case too. So if you want to deny Shannon and approve somebody else, I mean, maybe there's something you guys can do about that, even if, you, even if they do decide to move the borderline. Still have, because, I mean, we're just not as big as, as Shannon. And that hurt me to my heart too when I saw the, the mayor saying, I, I, I heard it with my own ears out of her own mouth, that the nonprofit organization don't deserve this, they don't need this, and we need to remove them. And when I heard her say that, it just kind of knocked me for, uh, for, for a shock on that. And so we're not just, like I said before, we're not just trying to get our church built, I mean, get our church done. We're trying to improve a neighborhood a neighborhood, and we're going to be working with the business, and, and if we can help them improve and grow, of course, it'll bring in another bigger economic impact, because that was one of the criteria, what significant economic impact that we will have on the community. First of all, it's visual from the street. It looks nice. It brings in more people, and then, as she was saying, we're contributing to the business. And we're helping to bring more people in. The nicer the areas look, the more people to come into the business, and the more people, more businesses want to want to bring a business over there. Right now, we need more restaurants because you know we just don't have a, a lot to go to over there. We'd like to have another nice big restaurant besides Western Sky, you know, over there, which we go to all the time. And Franco's busy, you know, but people don't want to put their business in the area because of the way it appears to look in that area. I yield back. Also, uh, when this tiers committee stood up, I do believe in between 2004 and 2007, you sent a letter to Gethsemane for invite. I'm Theodore Boone. I'm not just standing as a church nonprofit organization, but there are other nonprofit organizations that are not churches. And I want to look from this perspective about Martin Luther King Drive. Martin Luther King Drive has a number of historical markers, historical experiences. Um, and over time, that particular side of Martin Luther King, it has started having development, but previously uh, there was, I call it an exodus of businesses simply because of shift in population, not only shift in population, but the black businesses, the minority businesses, that were on the side, north side of the freeway, suffered because of population shift. There were businesses. The foundation of every community is education or the church. So when you look at people even sitting at this particular table, you will recognize that the business owners, where did they come from? And I want to say this. <clears throat> I really believe that because of, for instance, the school that we're talking about, we're talking about not a church. We're talking about an institution that has graduated a number of diverse people into the community. So that place of education, uh, I would say, uh, was in the people business. It's in the people business. What is a business in? They're in the 
people business. And without people, then there is no need for business. What I'm saying is this. I believe that there is something special about the dream of Martin Luther King for equal opportunities to develop, to create, to establish businesses. Uh, Guadalupe Center is located on the corner of 11th and MLK. Behind it is a gymnasium called Carl Ray Johnson Gymnasium. People for years have been mingling and taking care of well, business activity has been going on. Leasing space. There was an educational institution that uh, moved out on the highway. What's the name of it? Howard College. It was housed there. And not only Howard College, but there was also educational uh, uh, classes that was given to people who had dropped out of school. And so it provided for them an opportunity to get their GED. There's business going on. Not only is that, but they have had different shows and different groups coming in and having marketplace in that area. There's business going on. But I agree with them that one thing that hinder other people from coming and investing in that area is darkness. There's not, it's not lighted properly. It's not lighted properly. There's no parking space. There's no parking space even for Carl Ray Johnson. Mm -hmm. They're parking on a church parking lot because there's no parking. People are not coming and gathering as they did because there's not lighting there as the lighting that's on Chadburn. So if Chadburn needs special lighting, to attract people to their business, then Martin Luther King Drive need lighting so that people wouldn't be terrorized or fearful, and even it's a security issue by not having proper lighting over there. I'm coming from a different perspective. I believe that what we're saying is that we're not asking for a handout, but I believe the culture of that area that has been preserved is worth being maintained. If they can go all over town and spend $120,000 in an area where there's plenty of finances, businesses are working, but there's money going to be spent to cut down trees and do maintenance, I stand to want to contest that because this people need a hand, not a handout. And I'm standing up here and, and I have two or three things to present, but I guarantee you that economics and business will come out of it because the dream is not just for one people, but it's for all the people. And that's what we need. We need things that are going to bring people together, not separate them. And it's time out, I think, for just looking at one side of the story and not recognizing that everybody don't have equal opportunity. Everybody don't have access. And what we're asking for is access, access, access. Give us some access, and you'll see us do some wonderful things. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> I do want to just, if you might just stay there for a second, because I don't know, Stephen asked a question. I don't know if any of the other board members have questions about the specifics of the project we want to have answered. Can I say one thing before he asks a question? Certainly. Um, in the building that he was talking about, and I heard you all, a lot of people don't know about the TEARS program. And... Um, and, and so I heard that you all did have a, a meeting 
at Western Skies to let people know on the north side about the TIRS program. We had that a while back. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. not sure when that was, and, and hardly nobody came. Well, we're asking if we could be a hub in that building he's talking about that we can get together. He's got applications already. He's, he's got, I've, I've got a few. If we can be a hub for you all, work, work together, like he's saying, people will come over to our building. We can explain to them there's Spanish people don't understand what's going on. If we can just be the hub also for the TIRS program to get the information out, get people together, and we all work together. Yeah, and thank you very much. I just want to clarify because that there's no misconception. Nonprofits are eligible to apply under our rules. That's that's why the yes. application came. We are considering that under that rule. There is an item on the agenda to discuss whether that should continue to be a rule in the future, but we're not going to this this application is going to be considered on its merits. The board will debate it and decide whether it wants to approve it or not. We do have special guidelines for yes. a nonprofit application, cool. such as the significant impact, and you have to have three fourths of the members of the board right. approve it for it to go on to city council, and they'll have the final say. Right. So, um, I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that. Yeah. Um, we'll have the discussion on the policy issue later. Um, the, does anyone else on the board have any specific questions about the project itself right now, and what the project itself entails? Can I, can I speak for a yeah, if you could speak in the mic, because yeah, we're recording. Yeah, just as long as you speak um, in the mic so we can record it. What I want to say is our particular one that we're submitting is for the purpose, number one, of parking area that would be utilized not just from Guadalupe, but would be used also for call ray and provide safe place of parking. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, what we're planning on doing is up under that roof, we have institutions and organizations that are renting space. We have events uh, that's open to the community that they come, they bring their work, their goods, and they utilize that place as a marketplace. Mm -hmm. We have okay. some other things like educational resource center that people can come in and learn and be taught and be trained that they might be employed. So it's not just an ordinary building, it's a people business. And it is to help people have a better quality of life so that they'll have money and resources that they can, you know, okay. utilize back into that community. The community has been raped. We just need to get you back oh, to the microphone. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm a preacher, so that's <laughs> But no, but really, honestly, I just think yep. that right now in 2023, there are people who have ideas, who have visions, but need resources for them to become a reality. I'm one of them. All right. I don't, I don't want to know the name of the church. Uh, Mr. Brown just asked, I believe the name of the church is Gethsemane Baptist Church. What? His church is Gethsemane. Oh, it's Gethsemane. Uh, yes. Gethsemane well, Missionary Baptist Church. What we have is called the Bridge Connection. Yes. That's a nonprofit organization. Are there any other specific questions about the project itself? About what they're going to be doing, how much it's going to cost? Most of ours is lighting, lighting and parking. Okay. John, is there anything you want to speak on this project or information that you think the board needs to know, other than no, what's already you, been presented? You receive the packet that has the full breakdown, and it includes, you know, restuccoing the building, uh, new doors, um, th things like that. So there, facade improvements are a part of it, as well as the paving and lighting, as they said. Okay. The only the only question I had, which I called you about John which was just because there's there's the nonprofit element of it and then there's also the religious organization side of it and I just wanted to ask a question did we get any clarity on if there's any limitations on what we can do with tax monies towards a religious organization no and maybe add to it but the short answer is 
you treat them like anybody else. Any, you, anybody you don't else. want to penalize them for being a religious institution, but you don't. You know, you can't treat them better or worse than, than okay. any other nonprofit. All right. Okay. I just wanted to ask that question. Is that a fair summary? Uh, yes, that that's accurate. It, there's really no issue with uh, funding a project, but there would be an issue if you were to deny them solely on the basis of them the being religion. a church. Yep. That does violate the Constitution, and that's when you would okay. get into some problems. I just wanted to ask for clarification on that. So. Uh, discussion among the board. You know, I see if we're going to fund some cleaning of the streets, I don't see a problem funding this church. Yeah, I think they meet all the criteria that yes that uh, has been asked, and they uh, do the matching. Everything's in place, so. Okay. Any other neat questions or other comments or discussion? Concerns? I've got some when you get to me. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Stephen. <laughs> you always do. <laughs> Anything else from anyone else? Stephen? I certainly don't want this to be a pure callous, but I'm a Christian, you're a Christian. There are churches in this community who spend significant amounts of their budget on mission projects outside of San Angelo. Had my question of you, have you talked to any of the churches in this community big, small, or different, to, for assistance, and have you been denied? If so, I want to take you to my church and let you talk to them. <laughs> All right, uh, hold on. Is that question in pertaining to 1720? Beg your pardon? Is that question, yeah. Is that question pertaining to 1720 Martin Luther King? I didn't hear him. He's asking if the question, if your question is related to 1720 Martin Luther King. Yes, it's related to 1720. Okay, as far as going to other organizations. Uh, other local churches and asking them for assistance and help. No. You have not. No. Now, mm -hmm. before you rest on that one, uh, that building, there are two buildings there. The original building was Lassiter Music, and the church stood up in 1969 and moved into that building around 71, 72. And then we purchased the building. It was one of those leased to owns. Now, I, was, I wasn't even here. Mm -hmm. But I was three or four years old when all that happened. So during that time, my dad was called to preach in 75. And the church was turned over to him. Reverend A.B. Lee was the first uh, uh, pastor there. He passed away. Now, church isn't what it used to be as far as the workers. So from 75 to 80, we raised enough money to add on to that building that you just saw. Now, if there was another picture of it, that building has a pitch roof. The backside is flat. I think it's about maybe six or seven foot difference or so, maybe even more than that, in between, in between the height of the building. So, yes, we did put forth the work and the effort to add on to that. Yeah, but my question is, have y'all talked to any other churches about well, them lending you assistance as, a, as part of their missionary budget? Well, that's a... And I, I understand the, I understand your question, and I'm not sure, Stephen. I, I, from a little from from a point of, from a just a second from a point of order standpoint, I understand your question, but it also doesn't help us with our application process. I mean, I, the the My issue. Point the point is this, John Mark, that there are churches in this community that spend a significant amount of money, including the one that I'm a member of, on mission statements far outside of it. They ought to be doing it in here. Have have we met the resources I, instead of spending tax money? That's not going to enhance the, the tax structure of this. Community? Well, I think we, that's we will what, enhance that's, the tax structure of the, of the community. Hold on, just a second. Uh, I disagree with you to the extent that our purpose is to evaluate this application based upon the criteria that are the that's rules, in the that, rules. Are, that are the that's rules right. right now. Right. Whether they can or can't get money from other organizations, to me, is to a large extent irrelevant. I understand, I mean, I understand your, your question. One question that I have in relation to the congregation, in relation to your church, sir, uh, is just, I haven't heard any mention, what's the size of your congregation? 
right now, the size of the congregation, we have maybe about 20 people. 20 How many? 20. 20. Two okay. We, you were just talking about going out and the economic impact, so I just kind of wanted to ask that question. Yes, sir, I just want to say um, I have searched out for some additional help, and um, I've asked different churches, is there a different I didn't ask them if they had funds, you know, to fund us, because I don't know the name of your church. Which, maybe I asked them, what's the name of your church? First Presbyterian Church, right across the street. First Presbyterian, okay. Yeah. If, you, uh, if you talk to Joel Moore, our nope. pastor. No, nope. First, 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 uh, First Presbyterian. Well, hold on. And I, I, one other thing, which I said earlier, y'all invited us in between 2004 and 2007. Yep. I don't know why the invite is being pulled. <laughs> well, I, I want us to stay on task on the issue, which is the, the criteria that we've set, which is on the screen right in front of all of us. John, you can clarify if there's something else, is that what we're supposed to evaluate is this application, uh, does it have a significant, have a finding that it has a significant economic impact will be created as a result of the project and whether three-fourths of this board approve the project. That's really what we're, we're asked That's to correct. decide, not whether there's other funds that they might find or whether they can raise it in private donations, that sort of thing. So I want, I think we need to limit our conversation and our questions to that. I understand, I understand your point of view, Stephen, but I, I just disagree that that's, whether they can or can't is not for us to decide. Uh, it's whether it meets that, sec meets the criteria under our rules. Uh, just for clarification. Just, mm -hmm. This 1720 Martin Luther King is only the church. Sir, your, your nonprofit organization, that application is not in and not part of this. Is that correct? Not a part of this one. But okay. Okay. I make a motion that we approve based on the met criteria that is required for a nonprofit to, to qualify for funding. All right. And, and just to clarify, Tony, as part of that motion, you wanted to include a finding that there would be this project would have a significant economic impact as that a result of the project. That is correct. All right. Motion has been made to approve the project as finding a significant economic impact as a result of the project. Is there a second? I second. There's a second. Uh, we now have the motion. <laughs> now we can actually debate the motion. All right. Is there any discussion on the motion before the board? Any other questions? I have one statement, and I'm, okay. I don't want to be callous. I think as people in this community, as we as Christians in our churches ought to help other churches. And for that reason, I'm going to vote no. Okay. And, and before you move to a vote, I'll just note that that three-quarters vote would require six of the seven of you in order to approve. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? You know, the I mean, I'm new to the board here. Um, I want to I want to I want to vote yes every way I can. The problem is the significant in economic impact. Um, have we ever turned a, a project down because it did not have a significant economic impact? I'm not sure I can recall ever receiving a nonprofit application. This is my first my time, and I've been on this seat since 2016. Have we had other nonprofits apply in the past, John? Not that I can recall. But okay. the impact would be when you improve an area, it attracts other businesses. I you know as well as I mm -hmm. do, everything's built where there's it's an attractive area. Yep. How the, can we get there if we don't open up access? I agree with you, Tony. To and, yeah. and mine it's, is the lighting too. Like, um, uh, you know, we have Fernandez Restaurant right there on Eighth Street, and we're dark at night. Like, mm -hmm. I. I Throwing what? out the trash, I'm like, "Woo, it's it's dark." I mean, we need some light over there. So uh, MLK is the same in the same boat. So I agree. Right. Uh, right. The city should be the one to address the lighting and the parking for the Carl Ray Johnson Center. Right. Ryan, you had a comment. I built that Carl Ray Johnson Center. And we need park. We need additional parking there, and the city needs to address that issue, not you. Hold on, Ryan. Did you have something to say? I was agreeing with Brian. Is is and 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 Tony is, you know, it's. It's hard to ever say exactly on significant impact of uh, 
unless they're actually paying taxes and in. No nonprofits are ever going to pay taxes in, so we've got to look at what could happen in that area around there, and you hope for the best. And I, I will add, you, you made a point that um, when this was added, um, if the criteria was it has to be somebody paying taxes, that would never apply to a nonprofit. Agreed. Yeah. And so they would never meet this. So I think the intent when it was adopted was that a nonprofit could meet it. And I think as we discussed at the time, uh, things like aesthetic improvements to the neighborhood, as they mentioned, can, it's like a rising yeah. tide lift all boats. If, if you help improve the overall neighborhood, it yeah. could possibly I, impact everything and I don't, around it. Can you, can you show us those pictures again? Yep. And I don't, I don't want anyone to be, that's why I'm trying to keep these two separate. We are going to have a discussion about the whole nonprofit aspect of it. Um, but as of right now, this is, this is the way the rules are that we have to deal, that we have to address them. So go ahead. Any questions and the photographs? The gentleman wants to make a comment. Is this still open for discussion? Yes, sir. Yes. You have some public comment on it? My name is David Missouri. I'm looking from the outside in on this project. I've probably done 20, 25 buildings downtown here that were totally destroyed or whatever. I bought the whole block here on Chadmer Street, redid all of it. And, and I think the whole premise of this thing is it going to be an economic driver for the area to, in order for you to approve this. And I just want to say when, when we do those projects like that, when I bought all that from First Baptist Church, it is amazing what happens to the neighborhood. Yeah. So you really can't see it in dollars and cents coming in, but it, it takes that neighborhood and changes everybody else's mindset on that of what goes on. And, and I think in this area, it is a depressed area. And I think this is, would be considered a special circumstance area. You know, if First Baptist Church came in here and wanted to do it, I don't see an economic uh, yep. windfall for them. It's already, they're already established. They're there. They're, the area around there is all established. But in this area here, I think this is a perfect example of what needs to happen for a nonprofit for economic and for special circumstance. That's just okay. my thinking. Thank you, Mr. Missouri. I was on this board for six years, so. Thank you, Mr. Missouri. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yeah. Can I make one last <laughs> Certainly. Um, Certainly. I guarantee you that there will be economical impact, mm -hmm. significant simply because of not just theme, but actual causing some change to take place. Yeah. My, my view, oh, go ahead. I don't want to look at this. Go ahead. It, if, you're, if you're cleaning this up and you're lighting it up, then you're going to have, you're going to have people, as they stated, want to come in there, and I think David's dead on. But it, that's where you get your chance to have your economic impact. Because I... I had a barbecue. Well, it, that, that's where I was struggling as well. And let's, so. and let's be clear, too. I mean, part of the purpose, uh, I, I had questions about this more just from the standpoint of a broader policy issue with nonprofits and churches, and is that what we should be doing? After, after hearing some of the conversation today, you know, I also, I always come back to the purpose of the tiers, and it's not, it's, it is that there will be businesses. Yes, we want to encourage businesses. We want businesses to grow. But where the actual value to the taxpayer and to the city comes in is increased property values and increased revenue through property taxes. That's really that's that's how the money comes into the tax increment reinvestment zone too. So it's not just that there will be a business open up because they do this project. It's that it enhances the area and hopefully will help raise property values in that area for the owner. So that's my only comment. And, it, and, and, what, he did, and what he did with that, those property on Chabron did make a big difference. Yeah, it made a huge difference. Yeah. Call for a vote. Okay. Motions, the call has come for a vote. Any, <laughs> any objections to the vote at this time? All right. The motion has been made and seconded. Uh, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of funding the project at 720 Martin Luther King as recommended by city council, say yes. 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 And let's just hold up our hands so we can be sure how many we have. All those that say no, hold up your hands. And the appears the motion carries by the three-fourths, the six to one? Yes, yep. that's correct. We're required, so.
Thank you. God bless you all. And just just for clarity, uh, if anyone is interested, will this be what is the what is the city council meeting that this will be presented at? If anyone wants to be there for that meeting, it, it will be that same. Uh, we'll shoot for that second meeting in February. Second city council meeting in February. All right. Is that do we have any? That's all. The, but do we have the south zone? Now we have the south. Now we have the south well. zone. Okay. Woo. All right, so going through the south, we have two projects. Um, we have 109 South Chadburn requesting 75,000. Recommended is the 75,000. If you recall, we approved this for the fire and sprinkler um, back in 2022, so it's fairly recent. This one will be to improve the, the uh, well, I'll show you guys. So this is what the building looks like right now. As you can see, the downstairs has been in upstairs and what it should hopefully look like with your guys' help, the new 2013 and 2015 South Chadburn asking 75,000, recommended is 49,141. This one, as you can see, has the outside. What they're trying to do here is mostly the, the fire improvements, which we will be asking for with this go around. Um, they do have blueprints of what they would like to do. This is all interior stuff that didn't qualify, but um, hopefully they'll come back. 402 West Beauregard, uh, requesting 75,000. Um, recommended is the 75,000. This is a old hotel. We all have seen this one, I feel. Um, and driven past it. And so this is what it looks like as of, and this is their vision of it. Um, I believe this was a project that was brought to you last year. Uh, it just didn't make the cut. There were more projects than we had funding available, and it was just below that line of, of the ones that received funding. All right. Okay. So those being the three. We also did, like Mr. James did mention, we did have three applicants and three projects, and the bottom amount there on your bottom left, I believe, is 104. That would be the funding that would be required for those projects. So if we were to fund the projects, we would have a total of 66,453 left. Is that funding as requested or is funding as recommended? That's as recommended. Okay. And could you go through the reason? I, I see the other two are rec recommended at their full requested amount. And what were the reasons for the not, not being the 213 and 215 South Chadburn being at a lesser amount? Yeah, they, they included some interior remodeling costs uh, that are not eligible for tariffs. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was yeah. for an eligible reason, an in yep. ineligible reason. All right. Does anyone have any... <clears throat> well, let me just ask if there's anyone... Well, let me just check the board's pulse. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about any of these projects as presented so far? All right. Now, restate that, that there are more applications that did not make the cut for this that will be next month? Yeah, well, uh, the south projects are on a twice-a-year cycle. North projects we accept at any time. Okay. Uh, so we'll be opening applications in April, uh, probably your, for your consideration in either May or June. Um, and so uh, there are those three applications. Of course, there could be more. Uh, as you may recall, uh, we changed the policy a year or two ago to require that before you can even apply, if it requires design and historic review commission approval, you have to have that first. Yep. And so those three applications were doing work that required DHRC approval, which they had not yet gotten. Um, a couple of them I think were in process, but as we discussed at length uh, last year, the policy was changed to specifically say you were not eligible to even apply okay. until the DHRC approval. So uh, we would expect those projects would reapply in, in April. But as you can see, if you approve all three of these projects today, there'll be about $66,000 yeah. left and 104000 of projects, uh, that, you know, that would be uh, coming to you in April. At least. Uh, yeah, at least yeah. if there's if nobody else applies. Unless we all vote to put, take money out of the north. <laughs> There. Let's not go there. <laughs> Let's not go there. That's not even on the agenda. I might go there. Okay. I know you will, Steve. <laughs> um, uh, well. um, 
the, so the other projects out there have not gotten their approvals yet? Uh, that's, that's correct. Okay. Now, well, uh, let me correct that. I think one of those may have gotten approval last week, but again, not prior to the application deadline. And I noticed, you know, typically what we've done in the past, particularly in the south zone, is because there's limited funds is typically not awarding a grant to its full amount. Here we're recommending uh, for the full amount on these um, yeah. that, that's eligible. That would be the only thing I would just say to the board, you know, if there's more questions about that. I don't want to hold up any of these projects, but that's just something to consider. Uh, because when the next projects come in, obviously you won't have enough funds to, to fund them. But that's par for the course with uh, the South Zone. So, any questions? I just will, I will add that we, to my knowledge, we have not, we have not cut projects based on anticipation of future yep. projects. Yeah, we, we can't It's only do that. been done when they've all been in the same yep. uh, bucket of, of projects being yep. Yeah, that's all. That has only, that has not been because of a potential project coming down the road. It's just with those that have actually applied. So, and really. And if any boundary is moved or any of these or any of the ones that you know to come in, would they be affected by the new boundary? No, no, none of these projects would be impacted by that. Nor the three that? Uh, I'd have to look. I don't believe so, but. You can take it out of the north, do it. <laughs> no, all of those would still be in the new so, south okay. boundary if, it, if the boundary were to change. I'll open it up for discussion on approval of these and well, any motions anyone wants to make. I will say this, 402 and 109, those were two of the ones from early last year that applied, mm -hmm. and yep. we couldn't help them at all. Yep. So I'm happy to see them here. Um, still a little vague on 213, 215, like, is it, what's the plan for that? Is there anyone here on 213 and 215? Oh, Mr. Missouri. David Missouri, I'm the general contractor on it. On that project, we actually submitted it last year and there wasn't any funding for it. <laughs> okay. The biggest deal on this project here, in order for us to do any of the interior work that we want to do and outside work, we have to get the sprinkler system put in by fire marshal code. So that's why it's so imperative that we need that money, which we hope y'all will, will grant. The other thing is, you got to remember, that's a 17,000 square foot building that's been sitting there for 15 years, unusable, you know, it's nothing. So if we can get this ball rolling, look at the economic impact that building's going to have on that street. Yep. I mean, it's been there for a long time. Yeah. And uh, it's going to make oh, yeah. a huge difference. Will this, will this our special system in there, will it encompass all 17,000 or are we on different Yes, all of it. All it of actually it. has it in there. We've got to upgrade it. It's just old and dilapidated. And I was dealing with Ross Coleman before he left, and we went through all of it, and we've got our bids and everything. But... You know, it's just we can't do anything with the building unless we have a sprinkle because it's such a big building. You know, anything over 5,000 yeah. square feet, you got to sprinkle. So, you know, that's where our dilemma is. So, you know, once that goes, it's going to make a huge impact on that street because it's been sitting there forever. You know, and Joyce Wildey's the owner, and you, you, everybody knows her. She's She's got great ideas for it, and, and she's been around a long time, and she's got several pro properties downtown that she owns. and. Mm -hmm. It's just one more we want, we want to get going. So we'd appreciate any funding you can do. And that $49,000 would help you with the sprinkler system? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff, but, you know, we're just, that would help a lot. And like I said, this was brought up last year. What's the total project cost to get on that building? About 112000 Okay. I couldn't remember. Today. Well, they're putting a substantial amount. In. We've got to do bathrooms and you know, they want to do stuff on the facade and stuff like that, but, you know, we can't do anything really till, and, you know, if we don't get the funding for that, then there's no sense in spending the money on the outside. So it's a kind of a catch-22 for us. Is there any particular plan for those buildings or for the, what, what they're going to be used for? Speak on, just yeah, lease them? Like to ask Joyce. She's the owner. <laughs> okay. Do you, you have a that? contract for tenants? She just, I don't know what, the, she's going to make retail space out of Okay. Them. Yeah, I think that, that's good enough for me. I just wanted to know mm -hmm. if it was going to be an office or something. But it's a huge, you know, 17,000 yeah. square feet just sitting there not doing any yeah. tax revenue or anything, yeah. sales tax. You okay. know, this would be a big economic deal for downtown for a little bit amount of money. 
Yes, I agree with that. And the tax, we need tax money downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make the motion we approve the three projects as, with the, as recommended. The recommended funding amount. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Uh, motion made by Tony Valerial. Is there any further discussion or any other questions? Is there any public comment on any of these projects before we take a vote? All right. All those in favor, say yes. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. M motion carries. These projects are approved and should again be presented at the second city council meeting in February. And that is February 20, 21st. February 21st is the city council meeting where those will be considered by the city council. All right. Well, that took a little longer than I thought it would, but we'll go back up uh, to item number six, which is presentation regarding the investment policy for tiers funds. I think this was an item that you had requested, Stephen. Good afternoon. Tina Dierski, Director of Finance. This is going to be pretty boring after all of that. But <laughs> hopefully we can get you through it pretty quickly. Are we good? Do I? Which one does it in here? That one? Okay. All right. So the um, municipal investments are governed by the Public Funds Investment Act. Um, that requires that municipal municipalities adopt a governing investment policy on an annual basis. Um, it emphasizes safety, liquidity, and yield, and it authorizes allowable investments that we're allowed to invest in. Um, it sets a weighted average maturity, and it requires the investment officer, which is myself and other city officials, to complete training, training on a biannual basis. The investment policy establishes an investment oversight committee which consists of two city council members, two citizens with experience as investment advisors or, or analysts, the city's independent auditor, non-voting, and the city manager or his designee, and myself, the city's finance director. So the investment oversight committee meets at least quarterly, and we review the quarterly report um, submitted by the investment officers, and then we review and adopt a list of authorized qualified brokers and dealers. And then as far as performance, um, the general, port so we have a combi combined funds approach to investing the city's money. All of it's held in one account. And so that general portfolio book value at year end, at calendar year end was just um, under $250 million. The weighted av average maturity on it is 322 days. Um, the policy limit is 730 or two years. The average yield to maturity for the fourth quarter was over one and a half percent. Um, that's the fourth calendar quarter 2022, but first fiscal year quarter. Um, and then the general um, portfolio interest income for that same quarter was $627,000. So as far as the tiers fund interest income, the general uh, portfolio in interest income is allocated to the funds based on their fund balances. We have somewhere near 40, maybe more than 40 funds in the whole city. So each fund has a fund balance, which is similar to an equity um, based on whatever amount is in that equity or fund balance is how we allocate percentage-based out the interest income. Um, the tiers fund was allocated uh, $5,800 for that same quarter, fourth quarter of 2022, um, and the annual budget is $16,439 for this current fiscal year. And that's what I have for you, so if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Is the money rolled over 30 days? Does it roll over every Does 30 days? Does roll over 30 days for a new, to take advantage of the interest rates? We have several different ways that we invest. Some of it is um, in our local bank, First Financial. Uh, some of it is in what we call pools. And uh, the majority of it is, is in things like com commercial paper and things like that. But is in is it in a 30-day rollover, the, the tiers funds? No. I, I'm not no. interested in y'all's funds. No, it's not. It's, and the tiers Is fund, that a year fund? And it's not... The tiers funds money, it's like I said, it's in a combined bank account and it's invested with all of the other city money that's in but the general. Is that portfolio. fund rolling over every 30 days? No. For, okay. What no, is it? What is the time? It's not invested like that and it's in, let me tell you what kind of things it's in. It's in treasuries, it's in commercial paper, it's not in just a bank account that would roll over 
that, on that kind of a basis. What's the average yield on the tears money? 1.5? Said For the last quarter, it was over one and a half percent. Correct. That's, that, that's poor, very poor, compared to what the interest rates are right now. The interest rates are going up, and we are seeing a rise in that. And as we mature investments, we do roll them into those higher paying yielded. This is for but we're very limited on what we can invest in because we are a municipality under that public funds investment act. And these, this is uh, these are these are the numbers. Just to clarify, Wait a minute, I'm not through. Well, I just want to clarify this through the fourth quarter of 2022 is the yield number. Yes, correct? sir. Okay, thank you. And the interest rates start going up in about. October of this year, but anyway. And that's true, but we did it, have some of our investments. I'm not trying to be negative, but young lady, it appears to me that if you took the tears money, the, the money available in a pool, and you put, put it with other funds, and you roll them over every 30 days, you have more advantage in, to take advantage of the interest rate. We used to do that when I was city manager. We had large pools and small pools, and money we didn't need, we had longer invested, got a better interest rate. Is there something you can do to improve that period of time? If there was anything possible that we could do to increase yields, we would. And with, through that committee and that meets quarterly and, and with our investment advisors meter out of Austin, yes, absolutely. If we can in, in, increase that yield, we absolutely do that. Okay. You said we got 1.558 annual for the fourth quarter, but we're not getting point one for the year that's according right. to our reports no that's just for that quarter that's what we yielded I'm so saying. based on the the first day of the quarter to the last day of but the quarter that was the average we're getting reported to us for the year we're not even getting 0.1 percent that's right okay. so where, where's that where's the miss in that because something's way off our interest income for the for the on our reporting is less than 0.1 percent and that's saying one point so five. So something your, doesn't add up. Your fund balance um, currently is three hundred eighty-six thousand dollars in the north, and in the south it's negative. So, based on that three hundred eighty-six thousand dollars, compared with the two hundred fifty million dollars, you're getting allocated a percent of that. So you're not getting the entire. I understand. Okay. I understand. We shouldn't get yeah, but. If six hundred forty-four thousand dollars, we're getting one point five five percent of that for a year. It's not. It's three hundred eighty-six thousand dollars is your current fund balance that Say we report on monthly. It stands to reason, Gail, and I agree with you that we've got anywhere from a million two to a million six available at any one time in the north and the south for investment. That is not, that's not correct because that's not how we allocate. We allocate based on the fund balance. And since you well, have chosen to budget for $2 million and you're available for assignment line, it's therefore not in fund balance and we don't allocate okay. interest to that portion. So you're looking at the north balance up there. What, what do you, we have 2.788 beginning balance. That's before you allocated all of the remainder out for uh, available for assignment. So in our monthly financials that John has access to as well, you have in your available for assignment line $2 million that's pulled out of that available for assignment line. So what are you saying we have allocated for investment? $386,000. How much? $386,000? Yes. Because you have chosen to budget for the $2 million. If you had left it in your fund balance, you would be receiving interest on that allocation. So who, who gets the earnings on the other $2 million? It gets allocated based on fund balances. If, you had, if it was sitting in your fund balance, then you would be receiving interest on that amount. So, the, so for example, the $449,000 is for private incentives, that, that, that earnings goes to that fund, and the Chadmore Street gets the earnings on that, and the street maintenance is going to get the earnings on that, is that so fund that balance is the best way to represent how much cash you have avail available in your fund and that's why we do it that way it's the most equitable and efficient way to allocate out across 40 some funds and so that's why if you had that sitting in fund balance you would be earning interest on it but since you chose to budget for it so that you could have it available throughout the year that's kind of the trade-off yeah, but i don't understand we're like i mean we even though we we have got those funds set out and some of these projects even that we we funded last year haven't fully we haven't fully paid for who's getting the interest on those accounts 
the total amount of interest earned is allocated on a percentage basis by fund balance per fund. Ma'am, I did this for 27 years. And if you take that money, we're not going to spend all this money at once. And if you took this, the Tears North money that was available, not the, un, not the encumbered, and invested on a 30-day basis, you'd make a heck of a lot more than $16,000 a year. Okay. I can tell you that. I will take that into consideration. Beg your pardon? I will take that into consideration. We well, can you, discuss I, it with our investment committee. I wish committee. you'd do more than take it under consideration. I wish you'd adjust your policies to maximize the amount of money we can make on our investments. I understand, I'm, and I don't have that authority to do that, but through the Investment Oversight Committee, we could certainly have that discussion. And I think something we can look at with Tina is... Um, I don't want you to look at it. I'm, I'm asking <laughs> you to revisit your entire investment policy as it applies to tears money. We don't have anything else to do with that city money. But if we need to make that separate and get it out of the pot and so we can take advantage of rising interest rates, we need to do so. Just a point of clarification. It is not the tears money. It's all city money. And I can only invest it according to our policy and according to the Public Funds Investment Act, which is state law. We're, we're not I'm not trying to challenge you, but I don't, I, I don't follow... Only three hundred thousand dollars, and we have two two. We have two point four million available for for, for assignment. You started out with two point seven eight million dollars in your beginning fund balance. Right, and two point. But then is through budget for assignments, amendments, that's free. Correct. You started out with two point seven million dollars in your fund balance, after budgeting for expenditures, in the amount of two million dollars just in available for assignment. That brings down your fund balance. By that amount and so I, I think and maybe I, I, think I don't think we understood this but when when we created a line item called available for assignment that basically budgets it and pulls it out of the investment if I'm understanding it. that's correct so sure. we can maybe look at how we can maybe leave those funds in the fund balance so it's earning interest if you go to 30 should be. 60 day revolving uh, uh, investments you can do that and that's what I'm calling and we can, I've been trying to make. That can, money should be available to be invested for us and earn interest. That is not a problem whatsoever. We can do that easily with work with John to do that we, and put it back in your a, fund balance. Can we take a look at that, John? The only, the only, yeah, absolutely. The only difference it will make for you all is that when you do want to go and award a project out of that $2 million, just means we have to take a budget amend, amendment to city council to budget for that amount, whatever you want to use. Okay. John, if we can just put that on the next agenda, if you will Provide the details on how we could accomplish what Stephen and Greg are talking about, and then I don't can't know. You just I, take, can't you just take that same amount to the city council meeting that available for assignment at one time city budget meeting to knock it out, and we could do it throughout the year? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if we do what you're talking yeah. about, if you took about two million dollars on a revolving thirty or sixty day or forty five day cycle, you'd be making about sixty thousand dollars a year at three percent. Okay. Well, if, even at one and a half percent, we're yeah. making two hundred. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're yeah. making a lot of money. So Good they, point. We're, yeah, we'll, we're we'll, missing the boat here, guys. I'm telling you, okay. we'll bring it back for for an item on the next yeah. agenda to have a recommendation about. on how we ought to do yeah. that. Any other Good. questions? Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. You. <laughs> All right. The next item on the agenda item. Seven is discussion, direction, and possible action on moving the boundary between the north and south tiers areas. My understanding is that this was brought up at the city council meeting maybe in December and that they have asked us to take a look at this. My, my, my first thought was that city council had made some decision on it, but apparently that's not the case. No. They had um, just asked us to take a look at it. There were, uh, there was at least a council member um, that asked this to be on a council agenda for discussion and after the discussion they directed the board to look into this further and give them a recommendation um, and so well, I think this this also came up at one of the town hall meetings that we had um, and the uh, I guess the, the short version of the, the logic behind it is Harris Street is the dividing line of north and south for addressing uh, if you're north of Harris, you're North Chadburn, for example. If you're south of Harris, you're South Chadburn. And so the recommendation was uh, to make that 
and here's just quickly the two north and south boundaries, but basically to move the boundary from where it is currently, which is the yellow line, down to Harris, um, which is the whatever color that is line, uh, blue or green. Or All right, and I just want to, as a preliminary statement, particularly for our newer board members, uh, just give a little bit of historical background, recent historical background on this is um, there was some discussion amongst this board last year uh, with the frustration of not having as many applicants from the north zone and having a lot of funds in the north zone and not enough in the south to use for the south zone. Um, there was a recommendation made by this board to change that um, and, to, and to change the allocations. I can't remember if we we're going to change the alloc if the recommendation was to change the allocations or just put everything in one fund. It, it was not to put into one. It was to yeah. change the, the allocation. Basically, I think it was like a 50-50 split. Uh, we sent that. That was sent to the city council. Uh, city council wanted to have some, some public meetings. Some public meetings were held. That was one she was just referring to, the one that was at Western Sky, and there was another public meeting as well. Uh, out of that, basically out of that, out of that process, the city council rejected that recommendation. Um, and so I, my question is, now that this has come up, um, is, that, is that kind of a related to the same issue? Because that's, that's the question that we, we will be asked or the other persons will be asked, well, is this just another attempt to go back, take a second bite at the apple, so to speak? Mm -hmm. How did this, how did, I guess I'm just curious as to how now we're now we're back at this, and I I don't have any problem um, talking about it, and let let's all have the discussion about it. But um, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page as far as where we're here. So, can you do you have any history that you can explain for us, John? How this I would particular say it grew came up out of that same discussion? Um, I, I can't. I mean, I, I don't know why it was brought up when it was. Uh, and if that was related or not, but it, it, it came out of the evolving discussions okay. of what to do with North and South and the funding and, and that sort of thing. I, I attended one of those public meetings. I didn't attend the other. One I attended did not have any, you know, questions coming out about moving the boundaries or anything like that. And I don't know if the other, if it came up, did it come up at the other meeting? It must have. I don't remember okay. which, of the, which one it came up on, but... Well, I just was trying to clarify if this came out of the public meetings or if this was just a city council. No, I believe it was mentioned in one of the, the town hall meetings, okay. uh, but it, it came up on the council agenda at the request of, of someone on council. Okay. This, this, I'll open it up for discussion. This might be out of left field, but what's the purpose of having a north and a south instead of just having a tiers, one tiers? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell you the answer to that question because I was on city council when we did it. Uh, the answer to that question is that it was first proposed to have one tiers, uh, and it was the opportunity was at the time they, the proposal was to do a tiers in the downtown area. Uh, but the, the benefit of a tiers, as was explained to us by staff at that time, is if there's an anchor project that you can bring into that tiers that will help uh, bring the revenue up. And at that time, it was the Walmart on uh, North Bryant was coming in. So the decision was made to basically extend the tier zone up into the northern area to kind of take in that area as the as the anchor tenant or not tenant but anchor property to help raise the revenue for the tier zone. One of the objections that was raised uh, by some council members in the public was that basically all that money from the north area would be taken and used for, by businesses in the downtown area, and so the. The motion was made to amend it to have us, it's one tiers, but that there would be a zone, a north zone and a south zone, and the funds would be uh, allocated in the way they are now, which is that's why, that's why we have a north zone, and that's why we have a south zone, from my recollection of being on the council. That's why we have it. And the new boundaries would be what? Now, say it again. So, I'm so the, the yellow line is the current division right. between north and south, and that Aqua line would on Harris Avenue would be the new north south boundary. The green would be the new. Yeah. New York. Staying north of Harris Street would be in the north. So, City Council has already turned this down once when we recommended it. 
Can well, they we, they turned down. Can we amend that? You, you can recommend or not recommend whatever well, you you how choose. Do we move it and, to, uh, and, well, let me just ask move answer. It to the river. Brian has a question. You had a question. Yeah. So just from the history that you were talking about earlier, this came after the public meetings. This was, came to the city council, and they rejected it at that time. And now it's been asked to be re looked at again by no th this particular issue has not been looked at what yep. what was reviewed before was basically a different sharing of the funds right now if you're in the north all the north tax right, revenue right. goes to the okay. north i thought you meant that this, this boundary has been has already been turned no. down no, no, the boundary has the boundary has so never been moved to fund some south products out of the north yes right yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah one a, a discussion item went to city council last month wherein they recommended you all taking this up for consideration and giving them a recommendation where did the where did the proposal from for the yellow boundary line there on third street and fourth streets where did that come from i would defer to somebody who may have been on council at the time uh, I, I, I don't i don't know how that exact boundary uh, i think um i think the idea my understanding is okay. at the time was the south zone was intended to be downtown yeah. okay and that was roughly the boundary of what people felt like downtown boundary was at that time yep. okay, i'm going to ask one more question one more time why can't we move that boundary further south further south than harris avenue in other words instead of being harris why can't it be the river because that would be one tiers basically huh? I think, obviously, as you know, the council was concerned about combining the tiers. We're not uh, combining. I'm just uh, moving the boundary. I yeah. think. <laughs> based on based on the council putting all of downtown in the north. But based on council's discussion, I think they would yeah, they would not tiers. look favorably upon that. Uh, if you what you're proposing here, what since since the last five years, how would that affect any projects in funding? We haven't looked at that. Um, I, from my recollection, there would be a few on Chadburn that would would be in the north that today are in the south. Um, <clears throat> there, I think we've had a couple up in that second, third street area. Um, I think it would only be a handful of projects that that would have affected. Uh, but I, so that's just make any difference. Um, well, again, we, we've seen a number of projects here on North Chadburn between Harris and uh, 3rd and 4th Street. Uh, so I think that's the area where we've probably had half a dozen projects that might have been affected and, and more that um, are in, under, I know actively people are considering bringing other properties in to ask for money. So uh, it could make a it could make a difference at the margins for sure. Most of, most of the projects in the downtown area in Concho Street and all that are in the or south of this line on Harris. I would say the vast majority. The vast majority. Is correct. Of them. Yeah. What about the current ones? I, I, do we have any current ones that are that we haven't funded yet that are in in between there? Would it change their fund allocation? Not at any of those applications that I'm aware of or that we've seen already. Yeah, these would be ones that are approved like last year that were still ongoing, but we haven't completely funded. They haven't completed the project or anything like that yet. I'm yeah, just, there, there are some in that Chadburn Street corridor between Harris and Third. They'll still get funded by the South money because we've already allocated that? That's correct. Okay. And if, if you move the boundaries, there could be new projects that might apply that would have more funds available. But they're again, they're all going to be south of the Houston heart I, I think when when I was I think when I was on I don't remember what the compromise was I got it to third street but I think we were talking at one time about Houston heart being the dividing line uh, between those two but uh, I think I, it may have had to do with the multimodal facility yeah. that was going to be going I, in there. I will say that when this came up at the town hall meeting that was um, that was brought up as well from some folks in the north that said well instead of moving it south we should actually move it north to houston heart and that makes a, a more logical boundary and so um that that was a point of discussion yeah. at that meeting but that's not where your value is though your value your tax value is, in, is back this way yep this this would and i think that's probably part of the intent this would open up more of the northern downtown area to get some of that north funding 
that's going unspent. Yeah, I see what you're doing. I mean, we got Dick's Key Shop right there. Mm -hmm. We have all those buildings, the old printing place that shut down. I mean, I think someone got that building going now. Uh, yeah, I, I see all those buildings that need to get going and get vacant. What is the current boundary of the south? The, the, southern, the yellow line. Southern, the, yellow line. The, yellow line. No, the southern, the southernmost boundary of the south boundary. That's what I'm looking for. It's the river, isn't it? There's a little south, south of the river. Maybe a little hard to read, but it, it jogs around. But it's you can see it does it's, go it's, south of the river it's Avenue. About four blocks south of the river. Okay. Yeah, the farthest extent is about Washington down there. Uh, four, five Chapman. blocks south of the river. Why Harris? The only justification that I heard, have heard is that it is that north-south split, uh, split addressing. for addressing. So if I thought North Chadburn starts I thought at that Harris. split was on Beauregard. I, I on, thought that too, Harris. but until we started <laughs> okay, this Harris. process. Okay. It is the total, per, the outside perimeter of the tiers boundary fixed in concrete or can that be adjusted? Well, that's come up a couple times, and this board and the council have chosen not to look at expanding. There is a process for expanding that. It does create a complication, though, because the tax, the initial tax values, the base values of the zone would start at whatever new date properties are added. Right. Uh, and so you don't get the benefit of all that growth over the last so many years, and it adds some complication to, um, to the tracking and financial tracking because you've got you would have areas where uh, the calculations are different because they're newer. And, and in the past, that has not been there. I'm, I'm looking particularly at Chapman. If you exclude, if you extended that neck at Chapman, because there's some stuff that's outside the boundary right now on North Chapman that would be ideal for enhancement. That North Chadburn or South Chadburn? Huh? North Chadburn or South Chadburn? You said North Chadburn. South Chadburn. South Chadburn. South Chadburn. In fact, it was discussed right before the new Walmart came in on South Bryant about extending it all the way down to that to pick up that value that to help. Um, but that was a very complicated, and ultimately the board and council said, no, it's not, it's not worth the hassle. Okay. That one question I have, I mean, are there any, there are, if we extended it to Harris, I mean, I, I'm just thinking out loud of, there's the old uh, Standard Times building. There's some other properties like that. Are there any projects planned on that that this is kind of designed to help bring in or not? Or do we know of anything? Not that I know of. Okay. Again, the Standard Times was purchased by the city. And right. so that was. Oh, that's able, right. Okay. Uh, that's right. That's right. But I, I'm not aware of any big Thanks projects a lot. that the this The city's would... taking all our property yeah. away from us <laughs> for our tax. Um, that, between them and Shannon. Um, so, I mean, I, conceptually, I don't have a, necessarily have a problem with it. I think it does raise the issue of, oh, is this just another attempt to get North money to be spent? But I would say there has not been <coughs> all of the investment in projects, or as we said, most of the investments in projects have been south of Harris uh, in the south zone that, that we've really been been having so there really hasn't been a lot of activity I don't know if that will actually improve or in, if you move the boundary I'm not sure it would increase the number of applications um, can, but it might me, what is the criteria for putting Harris what what magic number or magic person selected Harris like you said I think it's just the addressing it divides north and south it divides and north and south Chadburn or north and south the it does too no. Mr. Chairman, and considering the time, I, I've got to leave here shortly. Okay. Uh, could Go we ahead. table this for the next meeting? Uh, I have no objection to tabling it, considering it for the next meeting. Any, anyone have any objections? I would like to stay for the other, but considering I'm, I'm going to. And I, if, they were, if we're going to table it, I'd like to have a discussion of why we can't extend it. The boundaries to the river that makes it meet the river if you, you just make well, the river the, uh, the boundary of the south it is it is almost five o'clock yeah. we have that? these we have this item and we also have another item which is on the nonprofit organization issue those are both going to be 
if this one's not done, um, that one will be a lengthy discussion. I'm yeah. sure. Yes. What's y'all's privilege? Would y'all rather just move table both of those until the next meeting? Yeah, I'm going to move we adjourn. Okay. We, we'll take a motion to table both of those, um, I think. I, I don't know. If, well, he just moved to adjourn, so. Move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> which, was, which would essentially table them, I guess. <laughs> the adjourn takes precedent. It's automatically tabled. Well, you haven't gotten a second yet. We can roll them over. Technically, okay. we wouldn't have to unless you tabled it, but obviously we know your intent. Yeah. Um, I think our desire is just to, I think, it, whether we call it tabling or adjourning, just to go ahead and bring them back at the next meeting for the next We're agenda all. item. Okay, with the if an adjournment is a table, I'll second that. That's that's fine. I haven't seen it done, but it, it works. <laughs> well, we still have the agenda to talk about future agenda items. So what we're just saying is we, we want just adjourn. We want to we take. Have we haven't that. adjourned at all. We didn't have a second. If you really want to be I've technical about it, he got a second, and I will I will not be able to attend next month's meeting. Okay. All right. All any, any other discussion? All those in favor say of adjourning under those circumstances say yes. 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 Any opposed? All right. Weird. We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>